Hello drummers, my name is Gary Williams and I'm here to talk about my new book, The Hi-Hat Foot Book. It's published by Wisdom Media and distributed by Alfred Publishing. Yes, we all have a hi-hat, so why is there a book devoted to the hi-hat foot? Well, because oftentimes that's the appendage that most drummers ignore. So in the hi-hat foot book, I go through five different timekeeping pulses with the left foot. We'll start by playing the hi-hat on one and three, then we move it to two and four, then to quarter notes, then to eighth notes, then to the end of the beat. So what I'd like to do is just give you a brief demonstration playing a groove where I keep the same ride, bass, and snare drum pattern, starting with no hi-hat, then I'm going to begin with one and three, then move to two and four, quarters, eighths, off beats, back to eighths, quarters, two and four, one and three, and then take it out. So in this fashion, you can hear what kind of an effect the different timekeeping pulses have on the sound of the groove and how the groove sounds without any hi-hat at all. So I'll give you that demonstration. Okay, so what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about the pedal techniques involved with the different timekeeping pulses on the hi-hat foot. For one and three and two and four, we're simply going to be rocking back and forth between the toe and the heel. So clearly, if we're starting with the one and three sound, then the toe will be in the up position and we'll begin drumming with the one, two, three, four, toe, heel, toe, heel. And then the opposite would hold true. If we did uh, two and four, we'd start with the heel up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. As far as the quarter notes, the eighth notes, and the off beats, I use a similar technique where I'm bouncing my leg most of the time in an eighth note motion. So you start by just moving your heel up and down. And if you can, then you spring off the pedal and then you can stop springing off the pedal, move it back to a heel only position, and then every other movement, you kick it off, thereby getting your quarter note sound or your offbeat sound. So this could be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So those are the different techniques that I use with the hi-hat foot in order to be able to play the different timekeeping pulses. Okay, now I'd like to discuss the bass drum pedal technique that's involved in playing some of the exercises. Uh, though this book is called the Hi-Hat Foot Book, there's quite a few exercises that the bass drum foot is responsible for playing against the five timekeeping pulses of the left foot. So most people can play either a heel down technique or you can play with the full leg technique. One of the things that I'm going to ask you to experiment with is with both. Now if I'm playing quickly, I find that it's better if I use a heel up technique and I position the ball of my foot toward the middle of the pedal. The best way to figure out the sweet spot is to start with your toe all the way forward, begin tapping, and move your foot down the bass drum pedal, and then all the way back up to where you started, and then back down, and then just basically closing your eyes and letting your foot tell you where's that sweet spot. So I'm going to demonstrate that technique now.
Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate a couple of different leg and foot techniques for manipulating the bass drum pedal. The first one is I'm going to use a whole leg motion where I basically am generating the stroke from my hip and I'm using the weight of my leg and simply dropping my foot on the bass drum pedal. This will produce these big bombs, these big sounding strokes. And I try to avoid mashing the bass drum beater into the head just because I can get more low end resonance out of the bass drum if I'm not pressing and stretching the head and killing the actual resonation of the drum. The other technique that I'll be demonstrating is this toe technique where I'm basically slightly lifting and suspending my leg, putting some weight on my left rump cheek and my left heel on the hi-hat foot pedal, and then taking my right toe and tapping the bass drum pedal, and then eventually that'll connect with the head. So I'm going to demonstrate some loud leg strokes and then some soft, faster toe strokes. So you can see the slower eighth notes can be played with the full, more strengthy motion. Faster sixteenth notes are down here. Eighth notes, eighth notes, eighth notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, and sixteenth notes. So here's how that's going to work. Now I'm going to demonstrate a combination of the different pedal techniques between the hi-hat foot and the bass drum foot. I'm going to play some different grooves, same ride cymbal, snare drum, and I'll mix up the bass drum, and I'll mix up the hi-hat. I'm going to demonstrate in the last part of the book there's some accented bell patterns and some suggested hi-hat foot splashing techniques. So I'm just going to give you a little brief demo of some of the different kinds of things that you're going to pick up from going through these exercises in the book. So the hi-hat foot book includes an mp3 CD in the back. Uh, there's actually some play-along charts from my band, Ecstasy and Numbers. There's an mp3 CD that includes many of the exercises, starting at slower tempos, and as you progress through the different sections of the book, the tempo increases. There's an article in here called How to Practice. Many of you probably would like to develop more efficient practicing skills, and that also includes a practice chart. And you're going to be playing the same patterns on the bass drum, snare drum, and ride cymbal through all the parts of the book. So the only thing that's changing is the hi-hat. So once you get through the first part without the hi-hat, and then you move the right hand to the ride cymbal and begin keeping time pulses with the left foot, the exercises will be the same. So really you're getting a chance to bring the hi-hat foot into the equation of all of the things that your other three limbs are also already able to do. So, hope you find this helpful. This is something that I created over a long period of time, and I'm pretty sure it's going to improve your hi-hat foot. Good luck. Thanks.